What if I told you that the thoughts that you have can change your life? It can transform everything in your life that you have right now. What if I told you that you have the power right now to change? You just need a little bit of guidance. I'm here with guidance, so let's do it. Have you noticed that there are certain people, no matter what they're doing or who they're with, they're complaining, they're miserable, they're looking for bad things and they're blaming everyone around them. You feel bad for them because you want them to be happy. Did you know those people are making their own unhappiness, unfortunately? They're keeping their focus on all the negative things and they can never focus on the positive. So they keep creating more negative. And even if something good happens, they will soon turn it into a negative. Lucky for us, we don't have to be caught in this negative loop. There's actually a way to re program your brain so you can let in the happiness. I know it sounds crazy, but just hear me out. I know what I'm doing. So our brains can process 11 million bits of information a second, 11 million. That is a ridiculous amount of tiny pieces of information, but we are only conscious of about 40, 40 out of 11 million. So when we are set on focusing on those negative things, which our caveman brain wants to focus on the negative because it's trying to keep us alive, right? When we're focusing on that negative, we forget all the rest of the 11 million things. But my question is, what if focusing on the 40 pieces of information a second that are negative is keeping away all the positive things going on in our life? and it is bringing more negative things into our life. So our brain is patterned to do the same thing it's done in the past. When we think a certain way, it's gonna keep having that pattern play out over and over again. You might notice that when I was talking about your friend who's negative, you might notice that they have the same patterns in their relationships, in their jobs, in all that, they bring into their life, they have the same patterns. And you might think, oh, wow, they're really unlucky, but actually they're not. They just have those thought patterns. Now we're gonna talk about how to shift them and how to change them so you no longer have to deal with the misery of staying stuck. I wanna share a quick story. When I was young, now I had very low self-esteem, but I had an opportunity to change my thought pattern and it's a very interesting story. So I was probably about 10 and I was eating at a Chinese restaurant and I noticed their, you know, their tablecloth where they have like the different, you know, years that you were born. And I found out I was born in the year of the rabbit and it said the year of the rabbit was lucky. Now I'm not a superstitious person, but I was like, okay, lucky. Yeah. There's a few times I've won at like board games or card games. I think I'm lucky. Oh, I must be lucky. And I went through the next 10 years of my life thinking, I'm lucky, I'm lucky. And even though I had still those low self-esteem, I won more than most people did. And actually when I was in college, my roommates did not want to play cards with me because I would win all the time because I believed that I was good, I was lucky. I believed it so fully. I had no idea that it's because I changed my thought pattern and I was only just noticing that I was winning. I was noticing and I was expecting to win. And so I kept winning more and more and I kept being lucky until later where I learned about thought patterns and I figured out the real secret. Now you can be lucky if that's what you want, but this can apply to anything in your life. If you want to be a person that attracts wealth or loving relationships or success, or, you know, if you want to be lucky, you have to first find evidence to what you want. Sometimes that evidence is super tiny. Sometimes you'll have a lot of failure evidence and it can be tricky to teach your brain to focus on that success. But once you focus on that success, and you keep focusing, it will continue to grow. And that 11 million pieces of information that you're processing every second, you'll start to train your brain to focus on the positive. And then it will continue to seek out the positive, find more positive, 
and you will start to see more success in your life and you will find it. You will get there. You will win the game and crazy things start happening. Now let's pause for a second. I'm not telling you to be a toxic, positive person. I'm not saying that at all. We still need to recognize some negative things in our life. We still need to be aware of dangers and aware of people that might be hurting us. And that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about finding the good. You still need to protect yourself. You still need to set boundaries. I'm not saying that does not exist because it sure does. You just need to focus on the good. Now, another secret that I have in my life that has helped me reprogram my brain is called the glad game. I know it sounds super cheesy and it comes from an old Disney movie called Pollyanna. She is a poor orphan. Both of her parents are dead, obviously. And she's telling her new friend about her glad game. She was raised super poor. And one Christmas she had asked for a doll and she really wanted this doll super bad. And she had gotten a pair of child crutches and she was very disappointed. But her dad's like, okay, let's look for something positive. And so they found out they were glad they had no use to use them. Now I know that sounds maybe a little bit morbid, but if you look at something that is definitely not happy and you try to find something glad about it, you're reprogramming your mind from going to the negative to going to the positive. And if you do it enough consciously, you will start to do it unconsciously. Now, I have been playing the glad game so much in my life. I do it without even knowing it. And sometimes I have to hold my tongue. Sometimes something bad happens to a friend or a family member, and I immediately think of something positive, something to be glad about. And sometimes that's not appropriate. If your daughter's dog died, you can't think, oh, think of all the money we're gonna be saving at dog food not appropriate. So as you're doing this glad game, just know sometimes you need to hold your tongue. It's okay if you think about it in your mind, but do be sensitive to other people's emotions because they do not need to be forced glad. That's just not nice. As I have been playing the glad game for more than 20 years of my life, I've noticed how much easier it is to find good in the situations. And I'm not saying I don't recognize the bad, and that I never cry or never get upset. I do those things too, but I'm able to go to what I can be glad about, what I can be thankful for, and it helps me get over those hardships easier. It helps me to find something that I truly am grateful about any situation. And guys, I am like the grandmaster. I can find something good about the worst, most terrible situation, and I can truly be grateful in it. And that has changed my life. So what is going on in your life right now that you could look for something to be glad about, that you could change the way that you're processing information in your mind? Now, it doesn't have to be a huge, big thing. It can be the tiniest little thing because making those neural pathways of positive thought can be very small, but you can continue to grow them and use them for big, hard things in your life too. But you gotta start when it's easy so that they can already be built. So when the hardship comes, you can already have that thought pattern down and your brain can naturally go to the positive. So this is an added bonus. A while back, I was driving around with my young kids and something happened and it was kind of a sad thing. And one of my kids piped up and they said, well, I'm glad this, and you know, they went into why they were glad about this. I thought that was kind of interesting. Only because I was aware of thought patterns did I even realize that because I had played the glad game for so long and were always looking for what I could be glad about, they naturally were looking for something to be glad about. Something that, oh, this is okay. Like recently, my seven-year-old broke her arm not fun. She's very active and it is miserable for her not to be able to run around the same and be able to do the same activity she was. But she was glad that she did it now so at least we'll be healed before summer break comes. And that's what I'm talking about. It's not saying like woohoo I'm glad 
it's broken it's like oh well i'm glad it's broken now instead of like the beginning of summer because that would be a lot more miserable and right now you know seven-year-olds they grow back bones really good there's things that they can find to be happy about it and to make those miserable situations a little easier now this is my favorite part what are you going to be glad about what is something big or small in your life that you're going to look at more carefully that you have looked at more carefully that you're going to find something to be grateful about and you're going to replace it i would love to know if you could put it in the comments below i love to read them if you think about it thoughts are always going to be in your mind there can be thoughts that are kind of running rampant that aren't really yours. They're just like random thoughts in your mind, or there can be the thoughts that you place there. If you have a negative thought that you don't like, something that makes you not feel good, if you leave it there, it will stay there and it will grow. But if you try to take it out and not replace it, that doesn't work because there is no vacuum of the mind. You cannot, unless you're a monk, you cannot think of nothing. You have to have something there. So replacing it with something that you could be glad about, something that is positive, even in the slightest little way, is going to help you change that pattern. And it's going to help you draw more positive things into your life. Now, changing this thought pattern fundamentally changes how you perceive life. And it will change what you draw into your life. It will change everything, because I promise in that 11 million pieces of information your brain is processing in a second. There are positive things happening. If you focus on those positive things, more positive things will come your way and you will be impressed. It is very impressive. Your brain is brilliant and you just need to give it a chance to let you be happy.